Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Due to a comment from a viewer, it, it jogged me basically. This item has been on the to-do list for an awful long time and in some cases is, you know, causing a problem now. Putting my clear pots inside black pots to stop the algae. Well, in some cases the algae is already there. It's not ideal putting it in a black pot after the fact, if you see what I mean. But I made a start. I went down in the shed and sort of bought a pile of all the different sizes. And um, I've done all of this lot. I've done all of that lot. And I've done that and that. That was already done. <laughs> I've still got Derek's little plants to do. Um, they all need doing. Um, I did those little ones and I've got some on here to do. Um, in fact most of the ones in this section but I didn't want to do it all at once and I just finished watering and got all those down and put them all back again and I just sort of looked at it and thought well I'm not getting them all down again that can wait till tomorrow. So uh, yeah, getting the pots in there, black pots, to stop the algae. Something I always used to do. And I don't know, it's just slipped recently. But um, anyway, so that's, that's job number one. And then I'll get the camera on the tripod and, and do what I came in here to do, which is what I call proper work, <laughs> which is working on an orchid. And this may need a complete repot. It might need just moving across the pot. But until I get it out, I won't know. We shall see. Right, it's a bit of a biggie. And it's one you've probably only ever seen once when I got it. I came home from Burnham's with it. But it's not one of Burnham's, it was one of Sean's that he gave to me. Um, and the problem it's got is the new growths, which are starting to push their roots out, are over the edge of the pot and around the back of the pot is loads of space. So if it's in good media and it's in good condition I might just take the back of the media off so that it can move back but it'll need a new pot because this one's gone brittle and keeps cracking. <laughs> I have to hold it both sides otherwise another piece just breaks off like this. So let's get it out then and, and see what we're dealing with. We're going to let go. See it's got roots coming out the bottom of the pot. It's certainly got a good root system here. And it's also got an awful lot of, uh, I don't know whether that's algae or moss, I think that's moss growing around the outside of the pot. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's moss. Well that, that means it's not too bad, <laughs> if you see what I mean. If it was algae then I'd rather it was gone, but um, it's not. Quite sure what that is. Anyway, um, the media looks quite good, but around this side, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want the moss to go inside of media. So I'm just gonna. It looks like it's gonna peel off just the moss without taking too much of the root system with it, because the root system's tucked inside. For such a large plant, actually, the uh, the roots are very fine. They're not big chunky roots. Oh, I forgot to say what it was. This is some um, Bratonia Shelob Tolkien. Um, the plant I had a very long time ago. And I don't know what happened to it. I don't know whether it died or whether it went to somebody else. I, I just don't remember what happened to it. But um, Sean said, did I want one? Because it's too big for the space that he has. So he wanted it gone, um, so it came home with me. Yeah, the media that this is in, the actual media itself, is quite good. So I don't need to do a complete repot. I just want to get the worst of this moss off from this side because this is going, you know, this is going, going to have some new media in front of it. Now the back of the plant I will take off. Otherwise, there'll be nowhere to put the. Uh... Actually, this might be easier to cut off. I come to think of it. Just cut it literally. Just want the whole of the back of the plant taken off. 
so that it will go up against the edge of the pot and new media can go in around the front where those nice new roots are. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this bark, it's got a nice woody smell. Right, and we've got a... and to get this right back against the edge of the pot, this is going to have to go. We'll snip that off now. Along with the uh, roots that are underneath it. This might look a little drastic but um, it's got such a lot of roots on it it's not even going to hiccup the plant. And the branching root system as well so yeah. So there we go that's got all the old stuff off virtually all of the moss little bits left which I can tweak. So you can see most of these roots around the back. These are dead roots. In fact I'm going to trim them a bit more because this is the oldest part of the plant. These are where the dead roots always are. But getting rid of them makes room for nice new ones coming through like this. So there we go. That's the, uh, that's the mess done. Now this has got to be potted deeper because we've got to get these roots touching the media and there's a big hollow here so it's going to have to go in deeper than it was and it's going to need a pot the same size as that but not that one because it's, as I said, it's, it's gone brittle. Plastic does that sometimes. Um, I don't know how old the pot is but for pots with that label on, you can pay quite a lot of money. And if they do this in no time at all, I wouldn't be very impressed. <laughs> I don't pay that much for my pots. Do you know, I haven't bought any pots for ages. I just reuse stuff. Oh, so. I have a, quite a stock, you know. It's always fun and games trying to find the right size, but I think I've even got one in here. It'll have to be cleaned up. Now this is one of these opaque ones, perfect, perfect. That just needs a rinse basically and that just needs to go in the bin. Um, yeah, so I'll just give this a rinse, I'll be back with some media. Alright, this uh, one job a day is working quite well once I get it in here. Trouble is I'm going to get out of the habit when Hannah comes down. <laughs> so, uh, we'll have to get back into the habit when we get into next week. Now I've got some medium bark in there for crocking and um, this is a mix of medium small bark and perlite. It is a fine root system and the objective is to get that. Where are my new growths? I'm just going to have to get some of that out a little bit deeper in the pot. Right, how's that? Either that or we cut some more roots off. We could cut some more roots off. Most of those are dead ones at the base there. I'm stopping it getting down into the to the depth I want it. Just about. Just about. Right, so we'll put a bit down the back of the plant. <coughs> And then we've got to position this in such a way that these two new, new growths here are sitting virtually on the surface. And I don't think I'm going to have anywhere near enough media. Now this isn't working. It isn't working. So if it's not working, take it out and start again. Why is it not working? It's not working because of that. So that huge bowl is going to have to come off. It was loose anyway, so that's good. And then we need this edge off because that's stopping it moving across. Some lovely nice new roots in that section too. Right, now we'll have to get this lot out again. Put 
most of the big stuff back in. It doesn't matter if it's uh, not well cropped. These roots are going to be down and out the bottom of the pot in no time at all. <laughs> so it's almost a waste of time cropping, really. Right, all the stuff out of the way. Right, now let's see if we can position this better now. The position of the plant is very important, otherwise it defeats the object. Now that's where I want it, right there. So we'll get a little bit down the back of the plant. That's not essential, but it would be better if, you know, there are some roots in that region of the plant, if they had something to go into. Right, now all we've got to do is fill up the gaps. So I'm, I keep looking at what I'm doing here because as I add the media, the plant moves. And I'm, you know, I mean, I need to push it back where it originally was. <laughs> right, how are we doing now? Nearly there. Fine root system, no air gaps. Big chunky root system, a few air gaps don't matter that much because um, it, it'll be okay. It's, it's just, it will be okay if it's got chunky roots. A few air gaps don't matter so much. Right, so both of these new grow growths are now sitting virtually on top of the media. That one is, and that one is nearly, and it will be, when I get this last bit of media down there. <laughs> what do you mean I haven't got enough? Perfect. Right, so now any roots that are coming out now will have something to go into. The two bulbs themselves will have room to expand up to their full size with their appropriate root system underneath. And there's no real reason why these two new growths shouldn't bloom. It's, they, there's plenty of backup plant there for strength into the into those new growths, and it would be nice to see Shelob Tolkien again. Very attractive blooms. I can't think why mine's gone. They did have one, definitely. Quite a long time ago, though. Anyway, so that's that done. It's got no tag. I will go and do one. That's something else I'm going to try and keep up with from now on. Is you know when I do a come across a plant that I'm working on that has no tag, I'll just go in, switch the label maker on. Sometimes I have to change the colour because I have got a colour code going on here, which I always have to look because I don't do the tags very often. I always have to go and look to see what colour I'm using for the type of plant. Um, now this is um, Oncidium Alliance, but basically it's a Bratonia. Now these used to be called Miltasia. And whoever thought that up did not think that through because the Asia bit is obviously the back end of Brassia. That bit works okay, but what's the milt on the front? It's ambiguous. Is it Miltonia or Miltoniopsis? Yeah, you've got to make these things clear. So by changing it to Bratonia, You've still got the bra bit, which indicates brassia, because there's nothing else starts with BRA, I don't think. But the tonia on the end can only be miltonia. It can't be miltoniopsis, can it? But it's the back end of the word. So bratonia, they're called now, or well, this one is. And that's a combination of a miltonia and a brassia. Probably both hybrids that went into that. <laughs> Where these intergenerics get more complicated is where, like, say it was a brassia 
crossed with a, something that's already an intergeneric, if you see what I mean. And if there were two in that intergeneric and you add brassia in, it's now got three. Three individual genera. Anyway, that's that one done. New label and an absolute soaking. Give that a good wash through. Um, the perlite I'm using is getting to the end of the bucket, so it's a bit dusty. So I give it a good flush through to wash that dust through. And the second and third watering will make it gone, basically. So yeah, that's a, not a complete repot. We didn't get all the old media out, but you know, as I said, this is, um, it's good bark. It, it's not breaking down. It's got a nice woody smell to it. So there's nothing wrong with the bit that's left in there under the main part of the plant. Obviously the two new growths will be grown into new media. Right, that's that one done then. Another one off the list. Somebody did say that with all the repotting that's going on, could I try and include some oncidiums? Um, well, the simple answer is, it's not as easy as it sounds, because if there aren't any due for a repot, then the simple answer would be no. But that's an oncidium type. As far as media and repotting is concerned, the media selected is based on the root system. Yeah? Now some intergenerics have got big, thick, fleshy roots. They would have had larger bark and probably not bothered with the perlite. Anyway, that's that one done. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.